It's not about spending money, it's about spending money on things that actually matter. I've always been interested in finances and investing and recently I started studying financial minimalism. I would say that after learning about financial minimalism, I'm actually not a financial minimalist, although I would like to be. To understand what financial minimalism is, you first need to understand what minimalism is in itself. Minimalism is all about just living with less. And this includes burdens like debt and unnecessary expenses. For many minimalists, the philosophy is all about just enjoying what life has to offer and looking for those life experiences rather than trying to accumulate possessions. When I first tried to research financial minimalism, I found that there was only a couple of videos on the topic. So I decided to break down what I believe to be the core principles of financial minimalism. The first and most obvious principle is to spend less money than you earn. The core idea of financial minimalism is to not create a stressful life where we're constantly pushing to acquire more and more possessions. Possessions that we believe by purchasing will actually make us happier than what we currently are, only to find that that feeling is very fleeting when we finally do purchase that item. We've all done it, we see an item of clothing or an accessory and all of a sudden we think to ourselves, if I had that, I would be so happy. Then we go out and buy that item only to find out that it never really made us happy in the first place. So principle number one is to avoid buying things we don't need. This is something I'm incredibly guilty of. I love cameras and I'm often looking at the latest camera gear that comes out thinking how much better I could make my videos if I had that camera gear. The overall argument is if you could actually go and buy all the things that you thought would make you happy in life, whether that's an amazing car or just something that you've had your eye on for a long time, but you also had the debts to match, or you had none of those objects and no debts to control your life, what would truly make you happier? If you're like me and you are actually getting into more and more debt, I'm constantly trying to buy properties and accumulate more and more, which comes with more and more debt, a fair question to ask yourself, and this is an individual question, is is that debt worth the mental stress that it's going to put on you? I'm not telling you there's a right or wrong answer, I think it's a very personal decision, but it's a good question to ask yourself. When you are thinking about your debt, a good thing to consider is do you have good debt or bad debt? Good debt allows you to improve your quality of life by making financial investments, whether that be buying a piece of a company or buying an investment property that pays you an income. Bad debt, on the other hand, is simply allowing us to go and purchase something that doesn't really serve a financial purpose and doesn't improve our position, but we think that object will make us happier in life. And this is a huge part about financial minimalism, which is avoiding bad debt. I personally have a car loan, which I would consider to be bad debt. Now, you could argue that for my job, I actually need a car and my job allows me to make income. So you could argue that this is good debt, but I would still classify it as bad debt because it's not income producing for me in its own right. Simply put, bad debt robs you of your freedom. Freedom to leave your current job if you're not happy in pursuit of something that will make you happier. Lots of us spend our entire life working in a job or a career that we hate simply because our debts prevent us from doing anything else. Imagine what you might change in your life if you didn't have debt preventing you. Principle number two is simplifying your finances and this is something I feel I actually do quite well. I personally have all my bank accounts set up in a way to make my life as stress-free as possible when dealing with my finances. I have my main bank which is set up with three different accounts. The first account is my spending account, and this is where I'll do all of my day-to-day -day shopping, just general life expenses. Then I have my tax account, and this is for anything that is tax deductible that I need to log for when it comes time to actually do my tax return. This makes doing my tax return super simple because all I have to do is print off my bank statements, go through it, and there's a list of tax deductible items that I can write off. I buy everything from petrol for my car to if I'm getting my car serviced, my telephone bill, anything that is tax deductible. And last but not least, I have a very small emergency fund account. Now this is simply for if I spend more in a month than I normally would. What I do at the start of every pay cycle is I will top up all three of these accounts. Any extra money that I have left over, I will transfer to my second bank, which is where all my mortgages are kept. 
The purpose of transferring all of the remaining money that I haven't allocated into one of these three accounts to a different bank entirely is out of sight and out of mind. I won't be tempted to go and spend that money on anything just because I can see the money sitting there. And this brings me to bank number two, which I also have three accounts set up for. The first bank account is just my investment savings account. So I keep a balance of $5,000 and you might want to change this number depending on what your mortgage repayments are. Then I have direct debits set up for all of my debts to this account. Every time I have income come in, I will top this account back up to $5,000 and any amount that I have over that, again, to prevent myself from getting tempted to spend it, I will actually transfer straight into one of the mortgages. The mortgage, of course, has redraw facility. So if I really need this money, I can get it back. If a tenant moved out and all of a sudden I had to cover the mortgage and there was no income coming in, then I could access these prepaid funds. However, until I need them, I want them out of sight and out of mind. By having the money sitting in the mortgage, I also have a lower mortgage balance and therefore pay less money to the bank in interest. Now you could set up an offset account or a redraw account. Often you have to pay for an offset account, so you probably need $10,000 with current interest rates sitting in your offset account at all times just to cover the fee associated with having that offset account. Not to mention if you all of a sudden start having $20,000 or $30,000 sitting in an offset account, it's visual right in front of you and again that temptation comes in to try and spend. I find that the best motivation for me is just simply using a redraw account that has no fee to redraw and then I simply see the balance of the mortgage going down but I don't see all of the extra funds that I actually have hidden in the background without clicking into the mortgage. If you watch this video and feel a little bit uninspired because you don't have the finances of a financial minimalist, well, maybe now is the perfect time for you to start. Set a goal by taking a look at where you are now and where you would like to be in one year's time. Make sure you make this realistic, however. Don't set a target of, I'm going to pay $200,000 off my mortgage in one year when you only make $80,000 in a year. Remember, the goal is to be better than you currently are now. So set an achievable goal and smash it out of the park. Leave a comment down below if you have any other tips to become a financial minimalist. And if you enjoyed this video and you're not already, consider subscribing and I will see you guys on the next video.